Okay. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm assuming you can. Um, can you still see the screen and uh, and see myself and um, and hear me? If all that's working okay, I think it should be. Then we can proceed. Um, if there are any errors that you're seeing here, obviously let me know and I'll I'll rectify them. So if we just shoot through this uh, this risk warning, we can get on with the webinar. Any questions at all? Just feel free to uh, to send me a, a message through the chat or the Q and A window. Actually, I'll bring up that Q and A window. Okay. Right, well, had quite a, a big sell-off last week, uh, not so much in the um, UK 100, one of the better performing indices uh, globally, actually, but um, it, definitely in, in Europe, and we're seeing a bit of a snapback today. Now, there isn't really anything in the way of economic data today. Um, there is fairly sparse amounts of data for the, for the majority of the week. Um, we do have uh, German ZEW tomorrow, so that could be one of the big drivers in terms of pushing the euro around. You know, we're um, we're attempting to put a base into the euro at the moment, and uh, could also be a driver of further gains in this uh, in the Germany 30. If we do pull up the Germany 30 while we're talking about this, um, this is a, a four-hour chart, but. If we go to the uh, the daily chart, so this is what we're looking at here. We broke this this uh, rising trend line. Uh, I'd highlighted this inside day. We had a breakthrough there, and then just had a couple of days of falling off a cliff. And we found some support, um, not unto, not altogether unsurprisingly, um, around this March 26th low. So the question now is, are we done with this correction? You know, are we, are we maintaining inside the range? Maybe there'd be some selling opportunities towards the top of the range again, but are we going to get up there? Um, there, there was a couple of catalysts at the end of last week. Uh, one was a change in, in regulations in China over the Chinese equity trading, and, uh, and, and I guess the other big one really was just concerns that, uh, that Greece are just getting closer and closer to a default. Um, um, the, the Greek concern is an ongoing one, and we're going to fluctuate between less and more concern. And, difficult to, to pivot your trades around that. You've got to be aware of some of the events going on. big one for this week is on Friday with the Eurogroup meeting. Um, the, the German finance, manage, uh, finance minister has essentially already said that he doesn't expect any resolution there. So that would certainly be a positive surprise if there was, but he's probably saying that for good reason. Uh, my feeling is that this sell-off last week was more, uh, even though it had some specific triggers, I would say it was more of a sort of post-ECB profit-taking. You know, there was a lot of buying into that meeting, and it didn't really produce anything particularly spectacular. Um, so, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm just going to phone call here. And so for that reason, um, I think we're getting some sell-off here. So off the back of that, uh, it's, it's hard to tell whether this is going to be the end. And for me, a pivotal point is if we do scroll down to this four-hour chart, <clears throat> which I originally had it on, this was the, kind of the first leg lower. We had a bit of a kind of consol consolidation, moved higher briefly before dropping off a cliff again. And that's just around this kind of pivotal 12K round number. So I think there's a good chance that we can push back up to 12, 12,000, but that will be a kind of decision point. Um, does correspond with the uh, this moving average here on the shorter term chart, and so I think if we push beyond this peak um, intraday, I don't know if it was a daily peak or not, but it's um, basically in and around this this 12, 15, 12, 20 type area. Above there, we're probably looking good to test the top of the range again into 12, 300. But for me, this is this is going to be an interesting one from the from the sort of breakdown area here up to the high. We'll have to see what markets do in that vicinity. Any signs to sort of false break above and then closing below, or just kind of rolling over with some kind of chart pattern, or indicator, indicator rolling over, you know, that could be a sign that we've got a, another leg to go on the downside. Um, we did mention the uh, 
the UK 100 being one of the better performing indices, I think part of that has been that uh, interest rates look like they're going to stay low for quite a while in the UK. And we'll have some more insight on that on Wednesday when we have the, the Bank of England minutes. The MPC minutes are probably going to remain 9-0. The data hasn't massively shifted um, from the times at which they were voting 7-2 to two and those two dissenters pulled back. Um, probably not enough really to imply um, that they should be voting for a rate hike again. So that would indicate that probably we're looking well past, obviously at this point, well past the election and could well be 2016 by the time we see a rate hike in the UK. So that, that's generally a good thing for, for equity markets. Um, and I think that's part of why we, we, sh we should find some support at this um, weekly demand area. So if you just see how I've drawn that, um, it's basically where we broke out big time above this, this weekly peak. And there's a chance we could come down to test it, and if we see more more specifically on the daily chart, at the top of this demand area is the 50% retracement, and then this rising trend line, which did get broken here. So obviously there's going to be different ways of drawing it. You could lower it to draw through, to draw it through that peak, but if we keep it around where it is, we see a pretty sharp drop down to uh, 6850. That's going to be a right about this 61.8% retracement and this rising trend line. So we may not even get down there, but a couple of levels to be aware of should we should we get down there. Now I um, highlighted in a sort of brief um, chart highlight video um, <clears throat> this particular pattern here, and this is just something to be uh, you know we had a, a rising trend line. And similar, similar to what happened here, really, is we, you get a push above the trend line. A few people will be buying on the breakout of the high, which can often work. But on, you know, sometimes it just doesn't. You get a false breakout. Here it can find it wasn't just a high, but it was also a rising trend line. And so then we got this um, shooting star reversal pattern. And so a couple of indicators together implying that we're in for a short uh, for a pullback. And then we got a pretty similar pattern here, where we pushed above, and then. Uh, with quite a long wick, and then uh, close below the trend line again. And I did highlight in that video, and then we got a sell off the next day. Uh, that in combination with this um, the RSI not f uh, not being able to to make a new high, whereas obviously the price did. Again, confluence of a few different signs that uh, the market's getting a bit overdone, but we're still above these moving averages. So you just have to be, if you are going against this daily trend, you just have to be aware that probably your profit targets need to be a little shorter than if you're going with the major trend and, and, you're, and you're expecting new highs to be made. So we covered uh, German and UK indices. I'm um, assuming everything's all technically fine. I've not heard any word to otherwise. Let's switch over to U.S. markets. Minimal U.S. data this week. Um, it's been sort of Chinese data in a way that's been driving U.S. markets along with earnings data, obviously. And we've got a pretty huge week of earnings. Um, so that's, um, that could be pretty significant. The Apple Watch uh, released on Friday. Um, uh, sorry, some uh, numbers on, the, on how many have been sold, at least on Friday. And um, durable goods data on Friday. So before that, it may, it may be the uh, China HSBC flash PMI, a manufacturing PMI, on Thursday that could be a driver. Um, and again, the, the Euro group and that sort of general Greek theme could play into U.S. markets. But I think probably before then, um, it could be, the performance of uh, some of the industrial giants, particularly those internationally exposed with the U.S. dollar, and the performance of sort of energy-related stocks, of which I don't think many are being reported this week, could be the, the drivers of the markets with, with minimal economic data. Now, to, just looking at this U.S. 30 chart, it's a, it's a similar picture in a way to the um, – you know, the other charts, and then we had that big sell-off, particularly in the U.S. markets, it, was, it wasn't really a week of, of selling. Um, it was really just Friday where we just fell off the cliff. And then the, um, the, you know, the, the official Dow Jones closed down about 250 points, which is quite a big sell-off. 
And so I think here the test could be, again, just a sort of breakdown area where we'd had, you know, this in itself is quite a significant kind of pattern. Um, I'm not a gigantic fan of, of uh, stop orders in terms of entering the market, uh, but that's certainly a kind of trading strategy here where you have two, two equal lows and then, you know, you're looking for a breakthrough. And um, if you had had a sell stop down here, you know, obviously selling it down and maybe taking profit at these, at, uh, at here, doing all right. Um, obviously, having come that far, trying the same strategy again at these lows would have not yielded such good results and you closed higher. So you have to be cognizant as to where we are. This had the support of a, a declining channel. So, again, this will probably be kind of key area to look at. This about 18,020. And then we could be in for a retest at the bottom of this um, downsloping channel or the, uh, the sort of 17,600 type area, which is where, these, where the mark has been holding above over the last couple of tests. Okay, I'm hearing a, uh, the battery light in my, uh, my headpiece. I'm going to switch to the old receiver. Head this technical problem off before it becomes a, an actual problem. Okay, so you should all be hearing me on the, on the handset. If you can't, then obviously let me know. So, I think we've covered, broadly covered equities here. Let's um, switch to FX. Um, I'll start briefly with, um, this is something I've highlighted a couple of times, it's one of the less frequently traded pairs, but something to be aware of. Um, and I think it fits in line with the sort of general question over the, um, the US dollar and where we currently are. Okay, thanks for the confirmation. Um, apparently I'm still being heard, that's good. Um, so here, this is a weekly chart, so a longer term prospect, um, but we've seen basically a double bottom. Now, on the topic of that false breakouts, this was a, a good example here, where we pushed higher, but didn't close the week above that, that key technical level. So you've had two lows there, you know, with the big breakdown, two lows pretty much formed here, and then this, we're bumping up this level a bunch of times, false break, but last week we closed above. Now we're, you know, we had a big old week last week. Now we could just push straight higher from here, but there's a chance of a little bit of a pullback. So that's what I've done here is I've basically drawn the Fibonacci on this weekly candlestick, you know, after this this breakout from this double bottom pattern, to see if, you know, if there is a fail, if the pattern does fail, which of course it's entirely possible it can, um, then at least maybe we've got a lower risk entry somewhere within this candlestick. So here's a sort of shooting star type pattern at the top here. We're getting a little bit of a sell off today in the New Zealand dollar. And so this is something I was looking at was maybe the, the breakout from this candle would be the 61.8% retracement. You see the low from this candle happens to be the 50% and you can see this big area that we were looking at which is basically 76, but actually more specifically like 76.20 or was it 30? That's, yeah, about 20. That would be the 38.2. So that's actually the most important level, but it's also the shallowest retracement. And then obviously this, I would argue, is perhaps if we get down there, it's significant, but just less likelihood of getting down there. But should we do? Um, you know, you're taking less risk uh, potentially if, you, if you've got a stop loss below the lows. Um, the only reason I sort of talk about the stop loss below the lows is because if we do break down there, then it would be suggestive of more of a downtrend, and typically you don't want to be buying within a downtrend. And so, and in, depending on how you're viewing this pattern, technically the pattern could be okay till the till the bottom again for maybe a triple bottom, but I would say through that low it negates really the pattern, just the, the breakout really being 
a true one. So just, yeah, something to look out for there on the uh, New Zealand dollar. And uh, another big one, which again, less frequently traded, is a uh, dollar CAD. This had been a pretty big support level for quite a while now. Um, really, for the bulk of this year, this 23.50 is held up, and we broke through it on Wednesday, got a follow through Thursday, a little pop on Friday, and that's getting followed through a bit. So, with the idea of support becomes resistance, this is an area to, to look at. Um, you know, these lows here could get up to there again, but I would say this 23.50 is kind of the big one that, that we got saw the breakdown through. It's going to depend a lot when we're talking about the Canadian dollar. It's going to depend a lot on the price of oil, because you'll notice that. Well, we'll look at it in a minute. But um, the break out of the trading range in oil higher is corresponding to this break in the Canadian dollar higher, i.e., the U.S. dollar lower, because of Canada's energy, uh, energy exports. You know, the Canadian economy is pretty reliant on oil, so higher oil prices is typically good for Canada. Now looking at the, uh, the euro, now we're basically in a trading range, I mean this is kind of tr pretty tricky trading um, anywhere other than just at the edge of the range. Now you can see that uh, we did find some support at uh, the 106 round number and we had a little more of kind of bullish engulfing pattern here and that's enough, been enough to push us up to the 21 day moving average and then we're just getting a sell off at the average no particular other um, technical cause I would say um, and this euro sell off today I mean again Greece is a big concern but I think maybe the big one will be the ZDW tomorrow that could be a cause for us to push up towards the, the top of the range should that come in better as expected um, and we've also, we've also got the, the EU flash PMIs this week, so they've been generally been doing a bit better recently. So if we're seeing a continuation in this uh, improvement in the eurozone economy, then I think that should be good for the euro. Um, even though the ECB basically said they wouldn't be finishing the program early, um, I think everyone sort of secretly knows that there's a good chance they could end the program early should inflation get back to target and should the economy look and be looking a lot stronger. That doesn't look that likely at this point, but still it's, it's something to be aware of and if data gets better, there's less and less reason to be shorting the euro. Move over to cable. We do have UK retail sales on Thursday and again obviously the, um, the MPC minutes. Now, this has um, yeah, been a, sort of pr a pretty kind of tricky market to trade as well because we had this break low and we did actually get a modest close below this previous low but then a kind of long wick and then a big old bullish candle taking us right higher back into the range again and we've gone through right to the top and we've got a false breakout out of the top above 150 and now we're trading low, lower below this um, shooting star pattern. So, it's sort of looking like a false breakout and a move back into the range. But if you do flip back to the uh, the weekly chart, then you can see this is quite a strong looking candle. It is, strictly speaking, a bullish engulfing candle, although the prior week was, was massive. So, you could argue that's impressive that it engulfed what was already quite a large week previously. But um, it uh, you know, only just kind of pipped it at the top. So again, if you're sort of um, viewing this as your sort of um, main trading catalyst, this bullish engulfing candlestick for a potential counter trend trade, then um, then you'd be looking at um, again that weekly candlestick and some potential areas down here. Um, so here you can see the, the FIB levels, and um, that's 61.8% retracement. 
um, fits alongside this low, which doesn't look so prominent on the uh, four hour chart. Uh, but you can see on the daily chart, it's pretty, it's pretty big. All these closes and opens and closes here, and then really these three candlesticks here, um, proved to be quite a good level. So a dip down to there, we'll have to again, it's um, in the middle of the range, so having an order there is would get you the best entry, but it would be risky because there is a chance that we just push straight to the bottom of the range again. But uh, you know, watching how that we technically set up in terms of indicators and and candle patterns, I think is worthwhile. In around this one sort of 47.50 type area. I'll cover dollar yen quickly, but really, there's not much to be said. It's um. <coughs> It's in this this same range, and it's it's broken this rising trend line for what it's worth. And this this was quite an important level in terms of the number of touches it got. And um, in amongst this range, round numbers are, are tr proving quite prominent. So if this this break lower follows through down to to 117, I think that could be more like 117.20. That could be where it's uh, based it out again. Excuse me. Uh, let's just have a look at commodities. Um, copper, maybe not one of the most common ones. They went dwindle, uh, dwindle on it too long, uh, but we're getting a pretty hefty sell-off here. And you can see this is kind of one of those setups to be aware of, because <coughs> we had a big reversal on that day, and it's basically made it to the top of that um, candle and sold off and. If we stay where we are, quite a big bullish engulfing candlestick for the day. So on the on the opposite end, there's a there's a similar pattern down here, which is um, a hammer, rather than this uh, shooting star here. So should the price get down to this level, be aware of potentially a, a similar a similar reaction. There is this rising trend line, but it just has two touches, and price moved above it up here, so not proving actually technically viable, uh, valid just yet, uh, but perhaps this um, RSI support that's hit sort of one, two, three, four-ish times in combination with that trend line could, could prove enough. But um, in the, always good to check the larger time frames, this, this weekly candlestick here is part of why there's, there's so many people keen to select this previous peak. Because that was um, that was our weekly supply zone and sold off pretty hardly, pretty hard from there. So this is quite a significant low, but uh, um, it may even need a push right down to this low again that we just highlighted. And a break of that rising trend line could simply a, a change in trend for copper. Um, oil has been, uh, as, as I mentioned previously, let's have a look at WTI first. Um, so this is the um, this is the pattern that I've had in place for a while, um, and this is you know I first started talking about it at the breakout point here, and um, you know I had basically the top of this supply area as the uh, potential objective of this wedge. So it, I I, th I think this is valid the fact that it connects these two here, but being a bit more conservative about the height of the pattern, just using just sort of using these last three or four rather than these lows over here you would, and then just using the base of the wedge here using that as the height and then projecting that here tells me we could get up to um, about 58.50 if you're talking sort of round numbers um, but we're getting a bit of a dip here and so Number one is the, the the area that we've broken out from. The 54 in, in WTI was the big one that we broke above last week, <coughs> and that had been capping the, the trading range. Below that, we have the peak that didn't quite get to 54, basically at 53. So this 54 to 53, if you've been aggressive, but I think if that gives way, you know, I mean, if you the thing is, we could we, yes, we're seeing a, a breakout, but um, 
you know, if we just remind ourselves of the uh, <laughs> the extent of the the trend here, it's going to take more than just a break of 54 to really alter people's sentiment on oil. Most people are still pretty bearish on oil, and so if you get a pop up to um, to 57 as we did, you can see right on the round number of 57, people just had orders in there to sell, and um, it may take the defence of these lows here it's better seen on the daily actually basically this sort of higher high high low high 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 low and so rather than you know so far we've, it's kind of been the highs that have been working I think maybe the high w possibly wouldn't work this time and it may even take just because a lot of people will be looking at a 54 that we broke from and expecting an immediate bounce it could happen of course but I think a lot of people, a lot of, sort of potential longs could get flushed out with a move down towards 50. And if 50 holds, again, then maybe pushing up to the, uh, the 58. And we're coming into the, uh, the end of the session here. If you did have any questions... Um, definitely feel free to, to fire them through. You can always extend it uh, beyond the recording time. Now, uh, yep, just have a look at uh, Brent. Now, <coughs> this is perhaps a bit more telling. Now, I've had this, uh, you know, I've conveniently written, driven this on here. This is based on these levels over here. I've had this on my chart for pretty much since, you know, th this sell off. And you can see, yes, we broke 62, which was the big one in uh, in Brent, but we didn't get too much higher, and now we're coming off again. And you can see just how, you know how that level's been drawn. It's basically just on the, you know, that's kind of where we broke down. after with that little pull higher. That's where we broke down again, and uh, we've just we've reacted from the top of it. Now I think. I think it was a bit of a um, a paradigm shift, the fact that we were able to get through these levels. <coughs> but, again, I think we there's still a lot of people in there calling for 40, even gets as low as $20 oil in, um, in Brent and uh, WTI. So there are going to be some people looking at this as a, a nice bounce to, to sell off, and we could get a move back down to 54 again uh, before a, a push back up perhaps up to this um, the 72 level and uh, this um, you know this uh, you, you will notice at the top of the supply area <coughs> where we've got this bounce back also corresponds with the 38.2% level Um, Phil, you're asking about um, API. You're talking about the um, <coughs> the uh, CPI in Australia. Or the uh, the minutes from Australia. Ah, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah, I mean, um, API, I mean, that has given a bit of a sort of precursor um, <coughs> to the uh, the Wednesday stats uh, in terms of the inventories data. But, um, yeah, I mean, that could be part of why we're uh, we're seeing this um, trepidation at the peaks here is that um, there's a good chance that that was just a one-off in, uh, in the inventories. And the API may, may call, you know, what's coming on Wednesday. Uh, which is just another build-up in U.S. stocks. Um, yeah, really, really hard to tell. I, th I think 
there probably has been a, a slight shift in momentum in terms of U.S. oil production. The number of rigs have, has been seriously cut down, and it's only a matter of time until that cut in the number of rigs feeds through to lower production. But quite when that happens, whether last week was just a sort of one-off, um, it, it's entirely plausible that it was, because we have seen numbers, and referring to the inventories data on Wednesday, we've seen numbers around 5 million for a while. Um, and so there's been 5 million, and then it's jumped up to 10 million again. So I would not be surprised if we saw API data on um, Tuesday and then the inventories on Wednesday indicating that uh, there's just been another big build up again. And that would be the you know, the fundamental justification for selling back into the uh, the trading range and basically leading to a false breakout higher. And maybe a false breakout lower in, in dollar CAD. But, uh, oh yeah, obviously pretty difficult to forecast. Um, okay, so I, uh, did I look at gold? I did look at gold, so I hope that's, um, I just saw that question on gold. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's about us covered for this week. Um, yes, summary for the Euro. Um, we've got the PMIs of the ZEW tomorrow, <coughs> and then one thing I didn't mention actually is the IFO, German IFO on Friday, and then big big day to culminate the week is we've got durable goods in the US as long as the uh, as well as the Euro group, um, potentially a big event, but probably just nothing going to happen, and um, you know maybe the more of the reaction to the Euro group stuff will be um, come Monday when um, markets are fully able to digest it. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and um, I'll see you at uh, see you at next week's webinar. Thanks a lot.